six people, six people will probably die in car accidents in different corners of the world during this three minute presentation. Although the efforts in the field of automotive safety have resulted in a continuous drop in the number of annual deaths in car crashes, there are still gaps that should be filled. For example, a statistics show that obese people have a significantly higher risk of fatality in car accidents than non-obese people. The goal of my thesis is to fill this gap. I want to use my engineering knowledge to increase the safety of obese occupants in car crashes. Before explaining how I'm going to do that, let's explore the reason for this problem. This problem is caused by the ineffectiveness of seatbelts for obese people. The seatbelts are supposed to grab us to prevent us from sudden movements and ease us toward the airbag in a car crash. In the picture on top, you can see what happens for a non-obese occupant in a frontal crash with the current standard seatbelt. This is how we want the occupant to look like. The pelvis close to the seatback and the upper body angle ready for airbag deployment. Now compared to the picture at the bottom, we chose an obese occupant under the same condition. He has moved much more forward and is not ready for airbag deployment. One reason for that is that he has a big body mass and the seatbelt force is not big enough to restrain him. Also, the abdominal fat tissue prevents the seatbelt from engaging with the bony structure of the pelvis. So the seatbelt force causes a change in the shape of belly first and then it captures the body with a delay. It starts trying to pull a water balloon with a string around it. When we pull it, its shape changes first, and then it moves towards us. Maybe if the whole protection process was faster, this delay could have been decreased. Now, how am I going to solve this problem? Well, a seatbelt has a mechanism that gets activated in a car crash. That mechanism has some parameters, like how hard, how fast, and how long the belt pulls. Modifying those parameters changes how the occupant is guided toward the airbag. Right now, those parameters are designed to minimize the risk of fatality for a person with an average weight and height. Now, if I tell you that more than one third of the US and more than one billion people worldwide are obese, you will probably agree with me that this population should not be ignored when developing safety tools. What I'll do is to find the optimized seatbelt parameters for obese occupants. And for that, I run thousands of crash simulations on a supercomputer each time with a new set of seatbelt parameters and eventually choose that set of parameters that results in the highest safety for obese occupants. The cars in the near future would have a smart seatbelts that can adjust their parameters based on the occupant's characteristics. With the seatbelt that I will design, the cars would know what to do when the occupant is obese. So this study will be a step forward towards saving more lives. Thank you.